broke, broke, girl, girl, girl therapy. Girl, 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 girl. Be comfy. Be cozy. <sighs> okay. Deep breath in. Deep breath. It's always like a lot. <laughs> like what people don't see behind the scenes. Yeah, it takes before, skills. Before I get into character. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just like, and then, <laughs> I don't know. Like, I don't know if that makes sense. You know what I just thought, too, is that I know when it kicks in for me when I get really talkative. So it just might work out for this. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, you guys, uh, before we begin today, just want to let you know that we. We dosed up. We dosed up. You guys requested <laughs> for me to keep doing shrooms. With a real druggie. With a real <laughs> Honestly, you're more experienced than Nathan, because Nathan, I love Nathaniel so much. But oh, me too. But you know, he's like he feels one ounce of highness, and he's like, he's excitable. Yeah, he he's like doing fucking like backflips and shit. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's like his personality. Yeah, he had the but zoomies. I feel like me and you, the zoomies. Mm. One, that is exactly what he is. Literally, just zoomies. gets the zoomies. <laughs> <laughs> like which we love we love that. we love we love that and it's so funny because like he knows that too and sometimes he's like it's giving mental health <laughs> and i was like yeah you know he's like it's giving a manic episode and i was like yeah that could be that that could be it too but you know <laughs> we love him for it we do but we'll see how this goes yeah and i didn't take my chocolates i took yours yeah and i laced it with a lot of other shit no i'm just kidding Maybe oh God, I don't know. What if, if no, it was I already cocaine, tested I would have it. Loved it. Tested and approved. Okay, cool. Yeah. Anyways, let's get into introductions because I'm so, I'm sure they're happy to hear from you. <laughs> Hi guys, it's me, Stephanie Megan, your host of Procol Therapy. And guess what? what? We got the motherfucking Keeks, aka formerly known as HK motherfucking brains, bitch. Hey. What's up? What's up? Okay, What's so up? we're recording in LA because we used to live in the Bay. Yeah. I mean, I, I still live there. You live in the Bay. Yeah. And it's so crazy how we switched. I literally, when I parked the car, I was like, what fucking part of California am I in? <laughs> I, I didn't even, I mean, I am also like running on two hours of sleep, but uh, oh, I'm also recovering from laryngitis. So please excuse my raspiness unless okay, you like that sexy. shit. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. sounds sexy. You yeah. can't even tell. <laughs> yeah. It's like one of those like pick me bitches. Like, yeah, you know, I'm like sick, but it's fine. <laughs> and they like keep talking. They're like, oh my God, no, I don't sound sexy. I hate, I, I, as much as I hate a, yeah, I hate a pick me bitch. I'm a fuck me bitch. Fuck me bitch. <laughs> um, but yeah, I didn't know where I was for like <laughs> a good like five minutes. And then I stepped out of the car and I was like, this is not Northern California. Yeah, 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 yeah. And also, like, <laughs> have you ever really, like, hung out in this part of town? I have friends in Okay, okay, yeah. okay. I, I some, don't want to say the word because I don't want them to know where I'm living. Oh, this area. <laughs> this area. <laughs> Bleep. Bleep. Oh, my God. My b- <laughs> I have no upper register. That was it's funny. Okay. <laughs> um, but, yeah, here we are at the new official BGT Studios. Look at this texture Look at my. T- oh, so sharp. <laughs> So, sh- so sh- <laughs> I li- if you guys like saw on Instagram, I like DIY'd my. I was um, freaking out when I saw this chair, like my the backdrop, cozy chair. I know, isn't it such an upgrade yeah. from where I lived in Oakland? Yeah, I love, I love the vibe. It feels like a studio. It feels like a talk show. <gasps> That's what I'm trying to go for because yeah. I'm really like 2023. Because by the time this is out, it's 2024. Oh shit! So for 2024, I really want to like step up like the show and make the content better the quality better the experience better and also just like be better as a host yeah and i but also still keep the core of the show where it's like relaxed like i don't want to be too polished like right. let's let's be real it's never You're gonna holding happen the brand where it's brand elevation exactly yes. because this is business get, you know why you are in marketing now I am. should we I give am. them updates about oh, just jump it around <laughs> jump it around <laughs> So what's up? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Kiko Chu <laughs> in the house. I kind of like this. This sounds working for me. It's sexy. <laughs> I like it. You kind of have like a sexy tone. <laughs> um, so as you can see, That's first of all, just, I drink? have a new friend here. This is my Christmas gift slash delayed grad gift to myself. It's my friend Haku. Um, I've been wanting this for years, and the artist. Um, she's from Seoul, Korea, but she announced that she's moving t- 
to New York in January. And so I was like, no, now's the time. Right. And yeah, that's what this is. It's healing. But um, it's a big ass hat, too. Yeah. Um, but it, it's super dope. I it love looks it. Really good. She she even free handed some of it. I was like, it's just my probably like my dream tattoo. Aww. But um, yeah, uh, this I mean, the last time we linked up was summertime. No, it was right before Halloween. I lied. <laughs> it does did feel like summertime though. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, before yeah, you moved, it was before right I before moved, moved. So it was, so okay, I, I give it to you. End of like September. Yeah, yeah, that oh, makes duh. sense. I so was, that is, I was, <laughs> lechon Kawawa. How did I forget? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, we were like heading into fall. Uh, both of us were still looking for a new job. We literally had an, a whole episode, like begging for our listeners to give us a job. Yeah. While we also talk about doing drugs. <laughs> and safe to say that... Diversity hires. Personality you know, hires. Personality, hire. personality yeah, us. sorry, sorry. And also, like, no one hit us up with Not at any all. job leads. No, all. nobody. So. so thank you, guys. Thanks for um, all your help. I'm just kidding. But, uh, <laughs> you know, a lot happened then in the following few months. Um, for me, I... Uh, my gonorrhea and chlamydia cleared up. Good job. Thanks. Wait, how long does it take to clear up? Uh, once you're on meds, like just two weeks. Yeah. Okay. But it was um, I wasn't even hesitant because of the scare. I think I was just like, I was kind of over the streets. Like, <gasps> I had my summer fun, and I was I just didn't have the motivation anymore to like be out. I think because I was wanting to end the year strong as far as like hitting my goals. Yeah. Um. I did have a car accident, which I don't know if I mentioned <gasps> that. No. Um, it was a very small, like, is a fender bender. I didn't hit anybody else, just my car. But the repairs, the cost of repairs was a lot. So it was like, I took a hit financially and I was just focusing on, like, working. I was working six days a week, grinding it out. And then um, a friend of mine um, had uh, told me about an opportunity for work. Um, and so I went in for an interview. And that interview led to a referral to a different company because um, they liked me so much, but they didn't have an opening for what I was looking for. Mm -hmm. So then the next company, I did a month of interviews. And then uh, just last week, I got an offer. Yay! That was just last week? Yeah. That's crazy. So I, uh, it's been a lot, um, even just like emotionally. Um but it's it's finally like everything's coming to fruition, um, and it feels like, you know, you, I've built up so much of this literally since I'm just thinking back, like since we were started like recording together. Oh, because that's like, when you first went back to school. Yeah, and um, I, I'm, you know, just grateful and happy and excited, um, but it just feels like I'm. I can take <laughs> a deep breath or like an exhale finally. Uh, or what's the word? Sigh of relief. I was like, what am I trying right. to say? Um, even though I am like, you know, have like a normal amount of nerve starting a new job, but overall just like, oh, the hurdle of like finding your first job after you finish your degrees, like it's fucking hard. No one ever talks about like how depressing and hard it is after you graduate career path yeah, yeah especially after depending. you graduate college and you don't have a job right away and especially in like certain fields where there isn't you know like for instance like nurses i feel like they're always hiring left and right like i feel like anyone that i know that com becomes a nurse passes the nclex like immediately finds Gets a job hired. within like a month because those programs are built for you to they build it into the program for you to have a career path but other traditional like it's jobs like or like a business it's like okay out into the free world work on your own resume skills work on your own interview skills and just like it's gotten so bad especially because the job market is so fucking horrible right now like it's just network like if someone were to if a youngin were to come to me and be like oh what advice would you have i'd be like as much as you need to do the regular like tailor your resume practice interview questions you need to be fucking networking because mm -hmm. it's literally the only way that I was Use able to get resources. this opportunity. Like 
if I didn't know anybody, I would still just be at my service industry job, which I mean, like, yes, it's good money, but I, I hate it. You know, like, right, right, I'm, right. And you worked at like a great restaurant. Yeah. Um, but right. It's, it's still a good place right. in comparison to other places I've worked at, but I'm just like, but it's not where you want to be. I'm done. I'm so tired of it. Not yeah. trying to be like in the restaurant in the service industry. Yeah, exactly. And like no shade to anybody who like live for that. Like if that's your career, go off. You know, I just know sure. me. I'm not built for it. So um, I yeah. worked at McDonald's as my first job. And afterwards I was like, I'm never working in the food <laughs> industry ever again. I'm not going to be a waitress. I mean, I'm not going to work in, hard. I'm not going to work with hungry people. Like that is it. It like it traumatized. It's me. not even like. It's not even about, like, wanting something glamorous. It's fucking hard. Y'all make it hard. People are the worst. The worst. <laughs> like, it's just so many times I question, like, how are you adults? And how are you responsible for other tiny humans? Because we're, like, a family-style restaurant. Mm -hmm. and like, I, I seriously don't think you should be raising other people it just you just see like all sides of like human behavior and i'm like you know what just give me my money at the right end of the day. you're like i'm, I'm not, just i can't connect yeah <laughs> but yeah so finally making my transition out of the service industry and towards my um overall career goals which it feels good Feels good. Even though I don't sound enthusiastic, I am. I am. <laughs> I am overall enthused. Um, and, and what are you supposed to do? Like scream and shout? Yeah, I'm supposed to Nathan. I'm supposed to Nathan. <laughs> but I'm just excited for like this new upswing going into the new year. Everything's new, renewal. I'm not being distracted by you know little boys here and there. It's it feels like I'm. Finally being an adult, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, you had to do a career change, you know what I mean? Yeah. Because, like, I mean, we've all, I think it's it's so normal in our, like, generation to, like, do those, like, career flips mm. and to, like, go back to school later or to, like, decide to, like, dip into another, like, industry. Like, I think it's, it's you know, it's, it's normal. Yeah. I'm... It, it's and I'm finally settling into like where I live in the bay I'm I'm really loving the area um my best friend who lives in SF now is literally moving to my city yeah, in January I'm like I don't even need to go out anymore like he's literally just up the street and I'm like is it which best friend is this TJ uh he's no so fine <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> TJ eh? is so fun. I know. He's I guess. like one of those guys he like knows he's, he's high, fine. He's hot in the obvious way, which is Yeah. Like, it's not <laughs> which is not bad at all. It's just He's so fine. For me, no he is. I know. He's That's a good, he's TJ's a good looking the one boy. I met. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd be mm, forgetting who's who. You haven't met TJ. Or maybe Okay, wait. Did. Who's TJ? Uh, I know he was fine too. No, Dean. Is, Dean yeah. fine as hell. Yeah. I get them kind of confused cuz they kind of look alike. Boy, gorgeous boy. Um, but no, one Dean, is Indonesian. Dean is Indonesian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fine as I would. I know he's a gay man, but like <laughs> Dean yes, or Teach. Teach is fine too. Because I look. Yeah. I know Teach from your story. Oh yeah, I think that's what it is. He's the dumb one. <laughs> that's just. I mean, yeah, yeah. He's they're so cute. He's a lot, but he's he's a good time. He's yeah. a good friend. And they're all like dancers and shit. You know, all of you guys are so cute when you like <laughs> just start dancing. Like, it's so funny when I hang out with you and your friends because you guys would just start dancing and everyone's good. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> everyone's like an actual dancer and you're like, no. whoa, this is actually fun to watch. Because you know, Val, it's like friends and people like dance and you always got yeah. like whatever but then you guys are like all like actually like choreo and it's just like it's, it's just, not <laughs> it's so good it's that's so misinformation y'all that's misinformation no, no but for, no, there but are people like that it, do like get I feel down like you should bust out a choreo <laughs> like it honestly there's different types like i'm definitely the the more like laid back type of person where like as much as i want to bust a move i'll still just give it a cute like shoulder shoulder on beat right, right, right. like because you know, like there, there are those dancers who like we don't want to show out because we just we it cring we kind of cringe when we see people who do like do too much. Right, right, right. Um, but, but overall, it's, it, it's but like, it's not like you're doing too much. And I don't want to like make it seem like you guys <laughs> are. It, but it's just like you guys are doing just enough to mm. know like this group can dance. 
And it's this so is a funny. group of Asians that know how. Is this the Jabberwockies? Like that's how it feels, you know. We're related. They're our cousins. They're our they uncles. Are, literally, our titos. Um, we. I mean, that has happened like more than once. Where people like we we show up to the uh like the club or get on the dance floor, and before like just seconds in, somebody's like, "Oh, you guys dance," and we're like, "Oh my god." You're like, it's so obvious. I haven't done any years, but yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I'm, you. No one's ever asked me that <laughs> when I when I go dancing at the club. I mean, they say I like I, they like how I dance, but it's, <laughs> they're never like, oh, you're a dancer, you know? I mean, which, and that's the thing, like, we're not looking for it type of thing. We're just, like, sure. vibing. It's just, because you're a good dancer, so you're just dancing. And you're being normal, and it's. We just want to exist. Yeah. <laughs> but you're like, just, but it's, but how can you not do too much when you're a dancer? You know what I mean? Like, I feel depends like. Depends on what level I'm on. If I'm hella yeah. fucked up, yeah, I'm a while out. But like, yeah. if I'm like on a good level, I'll just give you a cute little shimmy. Like, little I don't know what it is, but sometimes like when I am really drunk, I feel like I am like one of those good dancers like you guys. Yeah, liquid courage. You know? And so, and it's like, I could, I know what I'm like, I know I have rhythm. I'm not like a bad dancer at all. Like, yeah. I have, definitely have rhythm. I'm just not, it, I'm, it's just not my art. So it's different. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, like, yeah. I remember one time I was drunk at this like bar club with my friend Six and they were just playing a bunch of 2000s and then mm. like, like Sierra Two Step came on and I like threw Ooh. her my bag. And I, I mean, went, that's a song you need to hit the floor. Yeah. You need to fucking bust a fucking. And I was just like in this like dance circle doing Two Step thinking I knew the choreography, but I don't think I really uh, did. Okay, that's the thing too. Like, even though like we are perceived as, you know, dancers in the club. I'm the type of person where, like, if you just h have the vibe, I don't care if you have skills or not. Like, okay, I will hype you up. Because people you were know? hyping me up. Yeah, but if I was you have like, the confidence I don't think I knew and I the delusions to just get in the middle of the circle, I'd be like, yes, because I don't want to be in the circle, bitch. Like, I <laughs> I am not that really? person. I don't like the attention. Again, unless I'm, like, hella fucked up. But, like, I'd, I'd rather not be seen, you know? Oh, I want to be seen. Um, if but If I'm, like, really in the dancing mood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think the most... But Not I'm surprised most. you don't like because you're just. It's funny because lately I've seen you just like twerk. You know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. I've, oh, I've she, seen you do. that was definitely younger, twenty something <laughs> me. She don't do that no more. I mean, like I do, but like I've seen you like I in know. private or from like yeah, yeah, yeah. Or from <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, it's a good time. So Thinking when's our club event? Oh, you went to a club event. Segway. No, our BGT club event. <laughs> oh, I know. I still need to do that because here's the thing. I was actually talking to the twins, and we're gonna put a pause on our live shows, oh. just because it's a lot to plan, and we also want to like it, grow more, yeah, and have more traction, and then be able to like hire people to do it for us. Um, just because it's it really was like draining to do three in one year. However, we do want to do more like local stuff. So like, yeah, like ch doing like a, a an event at a club or something like that. Like that's something that I would want to be seeking hopefully for like the next year, something like that. Like I still want to do like events where I, I meet my people or whatever, you know, but like for the live shows, I think we're going to put a pause for now. Um, and, and then pick up once I feel like we're at a better like place. If mm. that makes sense. Yeah. But anyways, that that's my little, announcement <laughs> <laughs> little update for y'all a little update and yeah. then we literally me and the twins were literally just talking about it and when cammy brought it up i was like okay good because i was thinking the same thing because we were like i was thinking like oh shit we have to start planning for live shows and i'm just feel very like i feel like my mind right now is just having to focus on this show right here and upgrading the content that i have right here and growing right here yeah you know and like it takes so much as like a person to like do this plus do a live show because doing a live show is a whole thing in its own and it takes months to plan especially yeah. when you don't have it like a team and and i just think that last year my content really felt and i don't know if anyone felt this this is just like me but because I lived in the Bay, or not last year, this year, 2023, but I guess last year when... Both. Whatever, yeah. So in 2023, I felt like... And 2022, I felt like because I lived in the Bay and I had to come out here and just knock out so many episodes, it really just felt like I'm just knocking them out, you know? It was, it was a different... It wasn't as organic. It wasn't, yeah. And so I just... <clears throat> It, yeah, it, it 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 wasn't giving Erewhon. 
It wasn't giving <laughs> Erewhon <laughs> at all. It was just giving. It was giving Target. Yeah. <laughs> For real. But um, yeah, it, it was just, yeah, getting like everything just done at once. It was more just like knocking them out and making sure I always had an episode versus like making sure like every episode, you know, like felt special or like trying to think of ways to to like do better, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, I still like the chillness. I mean, obviously I didn't plan this episode, but. I don't when know. do we? But once January hits, because right now it's like the holidays, yeah. so I'm kind of in my cozy feel right now. So yeah. I, I'm just like just doing episodes with my friends with people that I feel like close and cozy with. You also just got this space. I just got here. I'm still yeah. working on my studio. So then once I, you know, January hits and like the new year hits, I'm definitely just going to be like, okay, let's knock this out. Because I already have ideas and I'm ma- I've been making lists, but it's just like... Getting, getting into the back on a rhythm. Right now, I'm in my cozy holidays. Yeah. You know? We all deserve a break. Yeah. And you'll find that rhythm. I think also... Um, it's just my numbers were lower. Th- I'm going to be very transparent. My numbers were lower this year than it was last year. Mm. So there wasn't any growth. If anything, I lost. I think everything you just said, or what I'm examining now, because I like to zoom out, and I think everything you just said is so admirable because it's just good business Mm -hmm. like if making hard business decisions is good business understanding having the awareness to realize "Mm, this isn't working and even though Mm -hmm. there's momentum like sure you had momentum with live shows but is it sustainable there's cost involved Mm -hmm. there's a lot to sacrifice to keep going and so why would you want to force doing these live shows when one it's not the core of what built you up and two it's it doesn't make it's not as feasible because you have all these other things that you need to prioritize exactly and if we had a team obviously more of a budget then then we'll do that because there's it's a dream to go on tour and to like meet people and i love doing the live shows but it's like right now it is not sustainable and i think because you know 2023 numbers were worse then 2022 just shows, okay, I need to, like, shift to this content and, like, make sure yeah. it's good. And, like, you know, I mean, my loyal, like, my loyal bitches have been there, though. Like, y'all hit me up. I see, you know. Yeah. I, but it's just, we're not, like, gaining it, new people, you know. It's been, if anything, it just feels, like, stagnant. Yeah. And and you can't always try to, what's the word, emulate? Not emulate, but, like, you can't recreate you know, your most viral, viral moments. No. You have to keep oh, no. going. Vi- also, like, v- virality is not something you can, again, like, recreate. And it's, it, that's organic. And every time it, we go viral, it's always the most organic thing, like the fucking Dick Nick. I had no idea. I Dick just, Nick, if I may say so myself, was the, the greatest hit. Was it? I mean, I'm not it's to, in, like, shade all in, the other hits. YouTube hits. And I'm this, not. I'm not. This but, like, is literally, like, the. I think it is one of, the is top. the YouTube highest? Viewed, yeah, and right? I think even the audio, it's the hi- still to this day. Oh, audio too. It's this. It, it's the Dick Nick. Audio, it's audio and no visual on Dick Nick. Yeah, Period. yeah. It it's. I think it's between the Dick Nick and the sex therapist one. Oh yeah, they did love that. That one. Th- that one went. <laughs> yeah. Pretty crazy, um, but Dick Nick is still up there. I mean, Dick Nick has yeah. been like. One of the old, you know, that's 2020. Yeah. And it's still up there, you know, which is good. But I'm also kind of like, I want to beat Dick Nick. You know what I mean? Sure. Like, I want to, like, sure. surpass what I did in the fucking sure. th- three, four years ago now, you but know? But also, like, seeing how the brand has evolved, not changed, but evolved since Dick Nick. Because yeah. Dick Nick, you were you were literally paying for a studio in downtown LA. And, like, sure, it was nice for the aesthetic but very quickly, just the next year, you started collabing more. I think that's when you met the twins. Yeah. You started doing more. I think the, we did rent to the studio because it was quarantine. So it was like, or not quarantine, oh, yeah, it was yeah. COVID. So it was like the most sanitary way of doing it, I guess. So versus uh, going into each other's homes. True. Because I would true, like, I would like before anyone would get there, I would like sanitize. Yeah. And make sure everything was good. Like I was trying to be, you know. Yeah. But the that was when you it was becoming more established, like yeah. the brand itself. And then the next elevation was, was the twins, the twins and, and doing more of a collaborative uh, channel 
And then once the live shows became a thing, it was like, oh, this is a whole other level. Yeah. So, and I'm not saying like, okay, what's the next thing? Because if you look historically, it's just organic. It's just organic. You can't over plan. You can definitely mm-hmm. have like, we have the ideas, but you know, overall. Yeah. <laughs> so like pause. Thanks y'all for listening to like, this is just business brainstorming. I know. Sorry, this is not the most interesting <laughs> we episode. We were not expecting this. I know. We'll read an email. Because that's also another goal of mine is we'll read an email. Even if, like, we went on a tangent, we'll read an email. Yeah. But, yeah, no, I just, I think I'm in my cozy holiday era, era right now. And it's yeah. the beginning of the year. So I think just like a lot of us, we're thinking of, like, what's next, yeah. you know? And, like, what have we accomplished? And, like, what's next? And I think that's just, like, yeah, for right now it's it's, for 2024 it's about going back to the basics and yeah. focusing on like the root of, yes of it all and to um and it helps that i'm back here now you know mm-hmm. and that, that was the, one of the main reasons why i wanted to come back was because i was like i need i need to go back to the home base of the show mm. you know because being far as as much as i loved i guess like the product activity of like getting things out and like not having to record for months like i i missed like i liked that in a sense of like as a producer i loved that but as like staff like the host i'm like i kind of love like recording week by week and like having my friends over and like you know i feel like that's like really exciting like I've, i get excited having to like do this this part yeah every week yeah you know i mean and that's what that's how you know this part is what you're what you're made for yeah you know it, it drives the passion what are you also i realized for? we did like no sound check but we're good what oh yeah no, oh, yeah I have i've been watching it I've i been have trauma it. from the <laughs> you do have trauma i've had so many like <laughs> we've had but a we're lot good of, that's the we're benefit good. of like this it's new, recording there we this can new see studio it. set up we're good, but we're we good. should read email. Let's just okay. like key key other people. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm yes. back to the trauma of like I, <laughs> we read like two emails and it wasn't recording. Oh my god! And I'm not gonna lie, when we were like, and we kept trying there to was like a moment, redo it. There was oh. a moment where you're like, okay, let's just redo this, and I, I tried so hard, but it, we, even as I was saying, it was so lackluster, and I was like, I don't. And think again, I, going back to like the organic thing, you can't you can't relive it and redo it. Like if it's. <laughs> It was if just, the reaction, even as I was saying it, I was listening to myself. I was like, girl, because I was like, oh, wow. Like, it was very, it like, was flat. Even yeah, though I was like, oh, good. I've heard this story before. But and I have then we to, were like, also to, tired like, because we did a full we episode tired, right yeah. before that. And afterwards, I was like, I just stopped. I was like, I'm just, I'm just not going to post that one. <laughs> I'm just not going to do it. But we good now. We good. We good we now. Good, we we good. got our, our whole studio. Mm. Oh, yeah, because we would do it in your, like, your your apartment room lo- yeah my <laughs> apartment's conference con- room conference room so funny okay hold on okay this one says losing my virginity to someone twice my age i hope they're at least 18 i hope so okay well they have do, do they have yeah, to be to please verify your age i am over 18 okay, okay. i love that you said that for oh wait what the Imagine they're like a forty-year-old virgin, and they they fucked an eighty-year-old. <gasps> Plot twist. Plot twist. Okay. Quick backstory. <laughs> I'm eighteen, going on nineteen. Okay. okay. So we clarify that she's eighteen and still a virgin. I've never had a boyfriend loser. or anything like kidding. that. What? I said loser. I'm so jo- I'm I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Bad joke. Bad it joke. has the shrooms hit you yet? I don't think it's hit me. I'm. I I realize I won't know because I'm so fucking mellow right now, <laughs> but I feel I feel, I feel fine good being here. I feel just chill. No, I don't think so. I don't feel the. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. I'll let you know though. I've never had a boyfriend or anything like that, but I've messed around before. Virginity isn't important to me, and I'm not naive or innocent. I just haven't had the opportunity where I felt it was safe to do so, so I haven't. I didn't start getting out into the world until recently. I'm huge on safety in general. I'm on birth control and I'm well-educated, I feel. But recently, I was out with some friends and one of my friends I met that night introduced me to this guy. We we immediately hit it off and he's, I don't give a fuck what I say, sarcastic, raunchy type, just like me. And we were joking around and hanging out all night. That's the only time I've seen him so far, but we've texted some and such. The thing is, though, is he's, sorry. (laughs) He's 35. 
which is so funny because she's like twice my age <laughs> and we're like that's our age <laughs> right we're like in our 30s right um it's fine i'm literally 35 yeah <laughs> and i cannot imagine fucking 18 year old i'm sorry i just wait let me not lie wait, I, you I have already just- <laughs> Anymore, <laughs> anymore. I was like, anymore. Rewind to erotic story time anymore. when you fucked a nineteen-year-old. Anymore, you know, it'd be so funny if you edited in the clip of when I literally. <laughs> so he did hit me up, <gasps> and this time I was like, you know, I don't want to fuck in the car. Like, Military just come, boy? yeah, um, just come to my house. So I picked him up because <laughs> he's nineteen. Right, right, right. I mean, there are 19-year-olds that drive, but this just wasn't the case for him. Right. And uh, I drove him. This motherfucker lives, like, down, like, near Cerritos, bro. So, like. <gasps> oh, that's fine. <laughs> but, I mean, the ass was worth it to me. Right. Um, uh, Rewind. I, can, I can't <laughs> lie because there's full record. Literally. Audio and visual. <laughs> yeah. We have it on record. That Take it to BGT so, Court. Yeah. the thing is though he's 35 with kids and has been married before and never wants to marry again so i wouldn't pursue a relationship with him plus i would feel wrong getting into a relationship with a man that old older 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 (laughs) (laughs) but for some reason i want to have a sloppy nasty drunk car sex with him Maybe it was just oh, like you did with your nineteen year old, your nineteen thing year old thing. I'm dead. That's literally, literally what this you is did. Like the straight version of this is the straight oh version. Oh Maybe God. it was because I was heavily under the influence of tequila that night, and will be, and will be next time I see him as Teen well. Teen drinking is very, very bad. bad. But, but I, I got a fake ID, ID though. though. <laughs> Do you know that? We song? just aged ourselves. Yeah. We just Proudly. 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 They're like, what song is that? <laughs> Everybody in the club getting tipsy. Everybody in the club getting tipsy. <laughs> <laughs> that was the shit. I love that song. Wait, can we play that for our outro? Yeah. Herb- and we go hit the steps. Yeah, Guess who Herb- dan- who's the dancer? <laughs> Him. <laughs> so I wouldn't, because there's a thing that we started with kids, so I wouldn't, plus I would feel wrong. Maybe it was because I was out in uh, car so, sex. She car wants sex. to fuck in the car. Next time, some of my friends think it'd be super weird for me to fuck him, and some are supportive of me getting most any dick at this point, as long as there's no strings attached. I work full time and everything, so it's not like I'm doing this as a high schooler, where we're in extremely drastically different places in life. And he hasn't even mentioned anything about this or anything that makes me feel groomed or manipulated. If anything, I would be the one initiating. I'm Wait, so pause. ready to start my ho- what? So she's met this person. Yes. But nothing sexual has evolved. She's no. just attracted. Yes. Got it. And she's it, like, we it. have the same sense of humor. It's like she's vibing. She got a girl boner for this man. Yes. Okay. Um, and he has a... And I would be the one initiating. I'm so ready to start my hoe phase, and this would definitely kick it off with a bang. Oh, she's intended. still a virgin. Yes. But I really want to hear your thoughts, too. I think y'all are hilarious. I'm a brand new listener to the pod, and I'm oh, obsessed. Welcome. I listen to, like, three a day at work. Oh, Thank shit. you. Damn. Oh, well, you going to hate me because I literally, off the top, called you a fucking loser, and I was joking. And she lives I in Southern joking. California. Oh. As someone who's 35 and has <laughs> fucked a 19-year-old. <laughs> First of all, I was 34 when that happened, <laughs> so <laughs> not quite double their age. But he was, but, well, it's the same amount of like. Yeah, double the pleasure. It was the same amount of like uh, age gap because he's he was 19 and you yeah, were 34, yeah. right? Yeah. So it's kind of the same. I will say, you know, it was a different I'm dynamic. I mean, he was an army brat. He was still in the closet. Um, I mean, he definitely knew what the fuck he was doing, but it was, it was definitely just centered around sex and I made sure he was comfortable the whole time. I was not trying to do anything weird. I, I told him we're not going to do anything unless you want to do it. Yeah. Um, and it was great. So, you know, if, if. If all the boxes are checked and you are your boundaries are being met um, and you feel like that you can still have you, you are in control of all your factors that you require. 
then yes, then fucking go for it, you know? Yeah. Um, because I didn't know this kid, you know? Um, this is me speaking from the other side, of course, right? Mm-hmm. Like, and I'm, <laughs> of course, not a fucking, like, predator or anything. Um, but it's, you know, as come, then coming from the other side, like, if I were in the the mindset of the 18 year old sure you're horny you want to have fun and all that stuff but you would still want to make sure that there are protections in place yeah like let your friends have your look share your location and that's just going Um, on like any day in general any 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 person public meeting with someone you don't know it doesn't even have to be for fucking car sex dinner like have your protections in place especially for women oh my gosh yeah so yeah, if the timing is right, if the factors are all right, yes, if you can safely go ahead and have fun, do that shit. Yeah, she's a smart girl. I mean, she says that she's like educating herself on sex. She's on birth control. Yeah. She's, you know, like she she feel. I mean, she listens to this podcast. Yeah. I mean, we you know we try to educate y'all yeah. as much as possible. Um, and I think that like if she knows that she wants it, and it's not like he's like was a predator about it or like s- really seeked her through, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's, he like really approached her. It just can't seem like it was a very organic situation and she can't help but she's attracted to him. Bitch. Oh, I was going to say fuck him, whatever. Yeah. Just as long as you, you know, you're safe. Yeah. And all those things. I was going to say like, even though mine was like, we literally, met within an hour of chatting we didn't know had no idea who each other was for me the way i at least i thought we knew that it was a good connection is because we talked specifically of exactly what we wanted and that matched because if it didn't match be like oh yeah we don't want the same thing cool next you know so obviously it's not the same for you you don't you're not meeting on fucking grinder but if he's that open about it like she said he's he's very it sounds like he's like crass or just open with his communication then i would say bring it up and get to be as uh transparent and explicit as you can because the more you find out up front like oh i want you to fuck me like this obviously you're not gonna say that right away but if you can warm up to that point and be like okay cool we've got this steamy chat going then say that because his answer will let you know if it's going to be something you want to do. And then if he just says some like, you know, stuff that you're like, you know, actually this maybe won't be fun, then don't do it. But if it lines up with exactly what you want, then it's a, it's a way for you to, to kind of map out the space and be like, okay, is this going to be a good hookup? Is it going to be worth it? Because the thing is, I, I'm not one to uphold virginity anymore. Like, I feel like that shit is just so archaic. I mean, you had an episode about that. Like, it's some weirdo shit. Um, (laughs) You are... It's some weirdo shit. You're a young woman. You are in control of your body. You are in control of your sexual life, your sexual health, and your sexual experiences. So rather than thinking of, like, you're giving something up, no, you're taking something in, literally and figuratively. And it should all be on your own terms, um, right down to exactly how you want to be pleasured. Um, so I would say the quicker you can get to, as much as the other person is willing to communicate, the quicker you can get to being absolutely fully transparent of how you want things to go, have that conversation. Because then it'll lead to a great fucking time, or it just leads to clarity of like, oh, we actually aren't sexually compatible. Mm-hmm. I'm just saying that's like the perfect. Am I shrooming? Fuck, I don't even. <laughs> I mean, everything you said. So I'm like eating hot Cheetos as you're like. Don't apologize. Venting, not Eat venting, more. but like preaching. Can I feed you one? Huh? Can I feed you one? No. Okay. Do you want to? No, I don't know. I it's don't very know. straight of you. I don't you. know why I had that. I wasn't going to do it sexually. Oh, okay. It's like a It's very straight of you. Was it? Should you do it with your mouth? Do straight guys feed. <laughs> <laughs> Should we do it just No, I'm like, pod? oh. I'm not, I'm not lesbian enough for that. <laughs> okay. So everything you're saying, I a hundred percent, 1000% agree. And I think that it's, I think 
especially because she said at the end, I'm excited to go into my whole phase. Mm. I think this is a good practice of that, you know? Yeah. Especially because it's going to teach you the communication with your partner, the liberation and you doing it because of you, because and being in control and being in control of your body and what you want. Yes. Um, and I think, and knowing that you can say stop at any time. Consent. Yeah. Consent. <laughs> Why did I say that? Like consent. Cunt consent. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. I might use that. Um, okay. I think it's, uh, I think where I went wrong in my whole in. phase was that, I didn't have this type of like liberation, you know, it, it always stemmed from trying not to get heartbroken or stemmed from trying to get a guy to like me. So I yeah. think before you step into this, I think you kind of seems like you are in that mindset, you know, and I'm excited for you. Just be safe. Yeah. And now that I think now that we discussed it more, I definitely retract my joke of calling you a loser. That was literally just, <laughs> it was just me being an asshole, but you keep I, cause I, I genuinely feel bad. Yeah. I thought it was so going to be like such loose. a good joke. But, so, just, but but the thing about you though, is like, you just make cunty jokes. You I don't do. mean it. I'm just a cunt. You're just a cunt. I'm just a fucking asshole, but you are a winner because I can't even imagine. I did not even have this mindset at 18. I was going to say at 18 years old, I, was just, I wasn't, I just wanted to be a I don't fucking even think hole. <laughs> I was like, gape me. <laughs> I didn't even, I don't think I even was whole phase like a word back then when we were 18. We were like, just hoes. I was in a relationship. I think I could. I was a relationship person. I actually never used the term phase until I was much. I feel like that, that term more didn't realized become a thing in until my sexual, later. Much more realized in my sexuality and much more in control of my sexual life. That's when I was like, oh, I know what a hoe phase is. I know when I'm in a hoe phase because I'm like, yeah, for a virgin, you're you're still exploring your own sexuality. So hoe phase is going to be something that you elect to have much later. You're just having sex. <laughs> yeah, you're just you're just trying to like get there. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> at yeah. This point. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're yeah. And I yeah. think when did you lose phase. your virginity or virginity? Uh, um, what was like the first time someone like dude were, was it the first half? time <laughs> i don't know i was gonna say i was like was the first okay, time the for full, you full virginity i was 21 okay did you fuck him or did he fuck you uh both okay we switched Aww. it up switching up his for you <laughs> um yeah because and and kind of similar like i knew what i wanted and I, I pretty much spoke that, you yeah. know, I was like, oh, um, and he knew like I, I, I was, he was my first. Cause even though I was 21, he was 25 and, um, he was super gentle, very accommodating. Um, I hate speaking about this cause he's my fucking ex and I hate him, but I was gonna <laughs> say he's, he's a, at uh, the time <laughs> it was nice for a first time. Um, yeah. So as, as, as far as first times go, it was not regrettable. I definitely still remember it. I remember mm. how great it was. Um, and it was is pretty much exactly what I not imagined. Because you can build up a lot as like a virgin. You're like, oh, I want to be this. I want to be that. Like, no, it wasn't like this magical experience. Magical sex happens when you know how to have sex. I was going to say, the first time you have sex is always kind of bad. And I was just glad that it like, was No one ever talks about that. Because when I first ever had sex, the I penetrated sex. I was scared sex, of that. I, w I was just scared was of it being a bad. nightmare. Yeah. I w yeah. And I, I w that's why I was glad that it just wasn't No offense, a nightmare. Kevin. It wasn't you. It was us. <laughs> we were young and... <laughs> I was, so yeah, I was just grateful that it was not a bad first time. Yeah. And that it was a solid, good first time. And then, um, yeah, the really, really great, you know, earth shattering, life changing sex that came much years later. Mm. Um, with experience. With experience. Yeah. And recreational drug use. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. But. Um, and also be careful getting drunk and having sex. I get very, oh. I get very like, maybe just because this is my trauma. It. I honestly wouldn't suggest it if 
I'm it's, being honest. If if you're focusing on having a great sexual experience, if you want to have drunk sex, time. just know that drunk sex is something different. If you want to have a first time, well, actually, no, I think she just wants to have like raunchy sex. So whatever you want. Yeah, but, but she just mentioned like she knows that she's going to see him and she's she's going to be like drunk. She wants raunchy like drunk car sex or whatever. Oh, okay, okay. So, which is fine. I just. I'll just say. I think, you know. Drunk sex is different. Yeah. And I just think moving forward with drunk sex, um, it just gets tricky, you know. And sometimes you could encounter really wrong people who know that you're drunk. Yeah. And definitely like to get advantage <laughs> of that. So. I mean, that definitely needs to be consent all the time. All yeah. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> but even with consent being established, the pleasure is it's different. It's like your body's already going through a stimulus. Yeah. Um, and I'll be honest, like you're it's you're not messy. enjoying sex the same way when you're drunk. And sometimes I mean, but she wants the messy sex, so I guess yeah. go go off sis, but I don't think that's as fun. Right. I think with just experience, know. I think in the, maybe in the beginning it seems fun, like when you're first having sex because you're like kind of nervous. So I think yeah. there's that like liquor courage. It's just like, oh, like it'd yeah. be fun. And you think, you know, at that age too, at 18 years old and underage, but that's fine. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Teen drinking. I guess, I guess we were all, <laughs> I know. Should we like be promoting that? That's a little. I'm not promoting. I'm just speaking on it. <laughs> I mean, were you drinking at 18? Oh, I was drinking at 16. Yeah, we all were kind of, I mean, I wasn't really allowed to. I think the first time I got drunk, oh, I, I think was 17. So, but 18, <laughs> I, but I don't know. But I wasn't really drinking that much because I, I wasn't, I, I was definitely not allowed. It was just uh, access because I had friends, a lot of, my parents had a strict hold friends. on me. Oh, that's what you yeah. meant. That's what you meant. Yeah. You, you weren't allowed even the opportunity. Mm-hmm. Got it, got it. And also like my boy, it was mostly too, my boyfriend at that time didn't allow me to drink either. Oh. So like, even if it was like, I had an opportunity for my parents, my boyfriend was there all the time. He's not going to let me. So I, I really didn't, it didn't really start picking up until a little bit like 1920. Do you remember the when first time you college? Had, do you remember the first time you had drunk sex? See, it's not memorable. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember. I can't remember the first time I had drunk sex, but and I can had a lot of drunk vaguely sex. remember when I've had drunk sex and my consensus is still the same. It's not as amazing. And I always as... feel bad about it afterwards. Every time I have drunk oh. sex is the ones I feel the worst about. I don't And have... the ones that I kind of regret because I'm just like, ah. I have had regrettable sex from, you know, post-partying, post-whatever substances, but it's not, it's not just because of that. You know, there's other factors that go into it. But um, I know I, I see what you're saying, though. Because in, in you're like, you were so drunk and, you know, sometimes yeah. you make questionable decisions when you're drunk. And when right. you made that decision, you're like, I wouldn't have even done that if I was sober. But I did it because I was drunk. Mm, yeah. And so sober you was like. You <sighs> get a little too over. It's a. It's like artificial confidence. Mm-hmm. And then you start questioning, would I have made that decision, same decision sober? Mm-hmm. And I would even feel bad about like certain guys I would make out with too. I'm like, because like sober oh stuff would, would not even be wanting to Let be even near you. you. Like and then, even just like drunken makeouts with randos. Right. Oh, so many Blech. of those. Blech. And I just, I think about that now. I'm like, ew, that's dirty. Yeah. <laughs> no, literally. <laughs> it's literally dirty. What? Yeah. Good times though. <laughs> but but I would always kind of feel bad because I'm like sober me would have never even like touched you or even like gone near right. you. But drunk me was just like down. Too down. Way too down. Yeah. Like no standards. Yeah. I think it's actually impressive the way she's going into it more self aware at eighteen because yes. I was not. I was so not self-aware, but also so overly eager to just get fucked. And <laughs> that's the, like, just definitive of no self-respect. Mm. And I was just so willing to, like, no, I just want to be a whole and I just want to, like, you know. Just get fucked. Be a cum dump. And, you know, I, the difference between 
being a cum dump at 30 versus being cum dump at 18 is that I'm consciously making that decision. Yeah. <laughs> versus like, oh, am I just throwing away my body to like be, let people take advantage of it? Mm-hmm. You know, there's a lot of there's a lot of gross motherfuckers out there. Disgusting motherfuckers. Yeah. Yeah. And I yeah, for sure. And I and I think also too like what this generation has that we did it or like the resources. Yeah. You know and also mean? just like, um or just even societally, like societally societally the, the types of narratives like the again I'm impressed that as an 18 year old she's brought up this top this topic but also with that stance already mm-hmm. being mm-hmm. so in control and so self-aware is so fucking impressive versus us we didn't have early that 2000s at 18 we didn't no there this wasn't. was not not the norm yeah and especially <laughs> like for women you know let's uh, let's say like at this time, you know, when like early 2000s, for instance, like just even thinking of like Britney Spears, right? And how she'd go to the club with like Paris Hilton and Lindsay Lohan and like, you know, they're looking sexy because they are and they're just being shamed for being like these like Gen Z's listening symbols. right now being like that lady with the knives. <laughs> the lady, the yes. lady that dances in our living room. Yeah. Um, yes, her, the queen. Yeah, the queen. Um, but then, you know, and so, like, having that and being, like, oh, you know, and, or just, like, in general, just, like, for me, that, that's, like, the first thing I think of, like, with early 2000s and being shamed as a woman and, like, seeing that, especially for someone who was, like, so big on pop culture, you know, like, it, it really influenced us. So it wasn't a conversation, but now it's, like, this, you know, there's there's so many podcasts about dating and sex and relationships and there's social media, you know, and, like, we, we didn't have that before. There definitely is more of a newer narrative society either porn or that's like it's it's a liberation Disney channel <laughs> liberation definitely for women and queer people to be more in control of their sexual expression without even regarding what a man thinks mm-hmm. you know which is great and even if those fucking misogynists are uncomfortable be uncomfortable motherfucker because the conversation is so far above you <laughs> <laughs> you yeah. know and then you we deserve men who are capable of having partners who are in control and sexually aware and you know ready for it rather than just being a piece of fucking meat you know exactly shout out to you though 18 years old and yeah. being you know a uh, being just even aware of your sexuality before yeah. you even had sex that's 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 pretty dope so i um and I know I'm, email. all my emails are pretty late. Wow. Good email, okay, she's fucking ready because this email was 2022. No, January 26, 2023. <laughs> Basically. 20, Literally 20, today. <laughs> what, what, what day is it? Okay, it's so the 22nd, 2023. Now she's a seasoned listener. Yeah. <laughs> um. So right back. Live, so give right us right back. Yeah, let's know that y'all fuck or what. You're going to release this literally a whole year af- after she. Literally. After she. <laughs> I'm just, okay, this another thing about my new year's resolution y'all is like, i have so many emails to get through and i feel like you know i feel bad because people are not getting responses and now i'm just trying to catch up and mm-hmm. i want to be able to like moving forward have at least one per episode that way we're being caught up yeah um with and giving you your advice right away yes oh <laughs> I remember because remember I did shout outs that one episode. I just wanted to do a special shout out to Carissa, our friend Carissa, because she just <gasps> she just got into USC. Oh my god! Yeah, Congrats. shout out to Carissa. Even though fuck the Trojans, but girl, get your degree. Get your purple, <laughs> <laughs> I love you. Yeah. Oh my Not god, USC, that's so funny. But I know I love so her. Proud I of love you. Carissa. Yeah, she's I love like Carissa. She, Carissa, you've been holding it down. You a real one. And you've been listening you a for real years. Motherfucker. You came to the live show. Yes. You show love. You show support. Yes. Like, mahal kita, bitch. Yes, mahal, mahal. Okay, this one says, I want a threesome with my boyfriend so bad. Is that bad? This is also on January 24, 2023. <gasps> Wait, so, can I, I really have to pee? Can Okay, go pee. Thank you. Um, yeah. Did you feel yours? No, I'm just hungry. Oh. I eat all these Cheetos. She fucking hit that shit up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know that TikTok audio? He's like, you fucking that shit up. <laughs> Literally me right now. Um, this is Cheeto Girl ASMR. Uh, Cheeto Girl, Cheeto yeah. Sister. 
<laughs> Literally. <laughs> um, I was going to say, you are holding true to the um, business, several business months to get to email. <laughs> Girl. But maybe that's the norm is like, we read emails exactly a year later. <laughs> No, I don't ah, want that ah. to be the norm anymore. It's like one year later. One year later. <laughs> Hi, guys. They don't need our advice. It's like, who even knows if they're still together? Who even I knows she's still you know listening what? to the show? What, I, I, I would be really upset. This is my call to action now. If you are someone who wrote an email and we read it so much later, write us back, but don't give us an update. Just give us a fuck you. Be like... <laughs> Thanks for finally getting my fucking email. I moved on without you. <laughs> Literally. For sure. And also, um Or if our advice like matched what you did. Yeah. Or I'm if curious. you did the opposite of what we told you. I'm curious. And and you were right and our advice sucked. Right. Like let us know. They just moved on from the show. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> so and also another thing that's like what I'm scared of too is just like deterring. They don't they don't like well bitch i know that's just my biggest fear right now just because yeah. i'm like self-conscious they're that off my to that other dad podcast no, i'm just kidding you what <laughs> like they're off to that other dad podcast or whatever it's called <laughs> yeah <laughs> you know which one of y'all like okay anyways uh, <sighs> yes uh, it says i want a threesome with my boyfriend so bad is that bad oh do it and it says hk the twins please read <gasps> oh shit here you read you know what I'm thinking now? We need an episode of me and the twins. I know. Have we not done that yet? No, only just the live show. Oh, yeah, but that wasn't. Like, I think it's because it's hard to coordinate. That's it three, is. three bodies getting it, to especially one. Especially when, like, I lived in the Bay. <laughs> and it was like, you know. Yeah. But also, you still live in the Bay, so yeah. it's it's hard to coordinate. Also, I appreciate because I'm definitely so different from them. So the fact that this person wants that perspective. How do you think you're different from them? Uh, well, just our, like, our outlook. You know, like, we would have different opinions on, like, things. But I feel like you, it'd be similar. I don't similar. think it's too far off. Oh, yeah. You're different from them as Well, far we're as both as the same level of, like, sexual openness, for sure. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I see. Now it makes sense why you asked. Okay. Yes. Um. So, you want to have a threesome with your boyfriend so bad? Is it bad? We'll see. Me and my BF have been together for almost two years now. Three years. <laughs> Postmarked January 24th. <laughs> so three years If they're now. still together, yeah. Um, I'm pretty young, uh, 19. Um, well, you're 20 now. <laughs> Going on 21. Yep. Uh, so I haven't experienced a whole lot of sexual connections. Hopefully by now you have. But I am so serious about my BF and absolutely could see myself having a future with him. Don't judge me. I know I'm young. Oh, first of all, I just want to say. You're a loser. You're. <laughs> Continue. Oh, my God. You're not a loser. <laughs> I was going to switch it up. I'm going to say this is like. <laughs> You're I know you're about so to be really sweet right now. <laughs> it was like it was giving sweet, sweet cheeks. But I already like I have to be consistent because I was a fucking cunt earlier. Yeah. No, but I just people who have this uh, style of speaking where like they're um, they're they stop themselves before someone else has even made the judgment. Yeah. Like before I could even think of you as a loser, you just like no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but no, I was gonna say like. <laughs> you don't have to always do that, you know, because people are probably not even thinking that, you know, it's definitely just like your own. Rejection. We don't work on that. We don't work on that. Let me yourself. read the fucking email first. Let me yeah. read the fucking email. Okay. So. <laughs> we're really ripping her apart from the probably. <laughs> no, I want to like, build you up. I want to build you up, girl. I want to build yeah. you up. Um, <laughs> so all we know is they're sh potentially on three years now. If they're still together, they're 20 t going on 21 now. And at the time of writing this, had not yet had a lot of sexual connections, but super serious about their boyfriend. Okay. Before my boyfriend, I dated a girl. Oh. Oh, so that's why they needed you. They need a little gay. I love this. I love this. Mm -hmm. Bye. Okay. No bye erasure. Um, <laughs> before before maybe I'm dating a girl, which was the first girl I had I've ever been with. She was definitely a stud. Mm -hmm. Oh, I love a stud. I think, I mean, there's some fine ass fucking studs. Oof. Would you ever <sighs> fuck a lesbian stud? No, not sober. 
Okay. But I mean, I can see myself getting to a level where like, especially if they're just like super, super like, oh, there's some fine ass fucking studs. Like, just don't stud. tell me you got a pussy. Just strap it on, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> but that's the thing. I don't think you know? I, I don't think I'm a studs type. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Because you're kind of a stud. Like a stud wants a fucking girl. Oh, like me, hopefully. Yeah. Do you want me? I would, I, I would <laughs> love a stud. And I've been trying to find pussy for a minute. <laughs> like, I I was on a, a FaceTime with my friend Six. I know we're about to get into the email. I was on my FaceTime with my friend Six, and I was just like, girl, I really, like, we were just talking about, like, lesbian sex. Because she's yeah. not, like, lesbian, but she likes having sex the with thing women. Is, the, as much as there are fine-ass studs out there, it's the same as, like, because they're fine, they're probably cuffed already. You know? No, don't say that. <laughs> even, even, if, even if you are threesome, let's do it. Okay, if you're a fuck boy, never want to be cuffed, stud, hit us up. Hit me up. You know where to email us. We'll read it in a year. <laughs> <laughs> just wait a year for a response back. Just, just <laughs> that's no. the real reason why you ain't getting fucked, bitch. You need to tend to the inbox. <laughs> I need to tend to the inbox, anyways. But she's not the stud. She likes stud. I mean, I could fuck her ex. <laughs> You're right. It's a collab already. It's a collab, it's a collab already. Okay, Let's so. Let's just keep it in the family. <laughs> damn. All right, so she had a girl, super stud, um, and was the type that didn't like to be touched. So I have never ate pussy before. Oh. Oh. I want to so bad in all caps. There are, I've heard oh. of these. I've heard of these. I've heard of these. Okay. okay. So she said she wants to eat pussy so bad. But anyways, when me and my BF first started dating, we opened up our sexual experiences and he told me he's had two threesomes before. One, two, three. Um, at first, this did make me insecure just because I felt less experienced than he did. No. Oh. Let me tell you, you don't need experience going to a threesome. <laughs> 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 you know, yeah, that is the experience. <laughs> so there's no, quali there's no, no qualifiers. There's enough people. For things to be going on. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> at first, this didn't make me insecure but because uh, I felt experienced than he did. But later on, it made me realize that this just meant he has more open. He was more open to new things. What I want to know is, was he with two girls or was we was he with a girl and two boys? Or two boys. Who knows? Uh, Never know these days. Okay. So... And we've talked about having a threesome before together. We even tried once at a huge camping trip we went to, and we ended up making out with a girl together, but she was not feeling it. Hmm. Fast forward, I recently met this gorgeous, gorgeous girl at a party I went to not that long ago. Mind you, I wasn't with my boyfriend at this party. I started taking back shots. Back shots? <laughs> back shots? <laughs> You just were taking shots of tequila, girl. Okay, okay, okay. You but were ready shots. for the back shot. The tequila led, <laughs> right, to, like, led, to, the, led to the back I shots. I want some back shots. Yeah. Great. That's hilarious. <laughs> That's funny. I started taking <laughs> back shots of tequila and feeling bold as she fuck. Was, yeah. That's, you wanted the back shots. Yeah. Oh I was totally God. crushing on this girl, like schoolgirl crush type shit. I was telling her how beautiful she was and that me and my BF <clears throat> have been looking for someone to have a threesome with. I don't remember the full convo because I was pretty fucked up, but I do remember her telling me she has a BF. Mm. Let's all but join. Do she still followed me the next day. Ah. Okay. Anyways, <laughs> I felt pretty guilty the next day, though, just because that all happened without my BF there, and I had to tell him. Well, yeah. I mean, you didn't cheat, but it's, just, it's something to, like, discuss. Mm-hmm. Um, he was embarrassed. What? <laughs> <laughs> no, literally, like, he was embarrassed, but not to the point where he was hella mad or anything. Basically, just made it clear that should be something we do together, not separately. Oh. But moral of the story, I really want to have a threesome with my BF, and he's also down, but I've been getting mixed opinions from all my friends. Is it Don't a good idea or not? fuck your friends, man. So. Sorry. Well, fuck your friends' opinions. Right, but yeah, yeah. Don't your act, your don't true friends friend. are going to be the ones that are supportive. They don't even have to be supportive of threesomes. They just need to be supportive of what you want to do, you know? Right. But first, what I want to say is 
you brought up a good point about your boyfriend's feelings. He felt kind of weird about you having this conversation. I think before you get to the sex part, you need to um, make sure that you're working on your open communication with your partner. And boundaries. What does that look like? Yeah. Make sure that you and your boyfriend, on both of you have to do this. You both have to loop each other in when you're trying to, you know, talk to another person and then what that conversation is looking like. But first, the first conversation is between y'all being like, hey, I'm at this party. Someone really cute is over here. Is it cool if I talk to them? That's the first question. Simple, right? Um, And like, granted, yeah, you were fucked up, but that's a whole nother conversation. You know, there's a certain level of like, adult responsibility if you're going to be out partying you have to consider your partner's feelings Mm. um so i would say work on that first because if you don't have that in check whatever sex happens or not even sex whatever connection happens going forward is going to be a problem if you have if your house is not in order yeah um so i would say Make sure you understand how to openly communicate, how to be transparent, how to respect each other's boundaries, what that looks like. Maybe practice some dialogue, role play, being like, hey, you're at a party. You see someone cute. What do you do? That's literally what me and my boyfriend like talk about. Oh. And I think that's what kind of led to him and I like wanting to like eventually open our relationship up. I think right now it's hard to say we're an open relationship because we're not like active right now you know um but like we know we've had that conversation of like okay you know what are we okay with um are we okay with going on dating apps something with other girls or guys whatever or if we were at a club and i like saw someone that i like was attracted to like how do i go about this you know like should i give you a call beforehand or afterwards or like what what is like what does that look like and what are you okay with yeah and what like what are you okay with and what can i you know and so we've literally thought of just like every scenario yeah and that's how we created like okay we're not cool with like fucking friends or co-workers or or exes or whatever it is like having those boundaries in place to be like i'm cool with this but i'm not cool with that you know and especially because it's like you both want to tap into like non-monogamish ish in a sense of like you you're you're willing to do a threesome so like okay so how does that look like how should we approach it what's because i could see how like because it looks like that she she wanted that and she was just kind of approaching it to like okay like this is like i'm gonna you know flirt with this girl and let her know how i feel but again it's like you don't know what your boyfriend's cool with like does he rather like be there does he rather you just like you do your thing and you bring it home. You know what I mean? Like whatever the scenario is, I think you're right. Like just talking and putting like thinking of like every scenario and putting boundaries in place of what you're cool with and what you're not cool with. Yeah. And that's what like me and my boyfriend did. And that's how I eventually came to the idea of like, Oh, I actually would be okay if you had a side chick. Like I would be okay with this, you know? And he's like, you know, not really comfortable with me like making out with a guy at a bar, like in front of everyone, maybe like, in, in private is fine conversations. yes in private is fine you know like or i'd rather you like text me let me know and for instance like let's say i go on like a girl's trip or something to like vegas because i'm on a girl's trip i'm gonna act a little single so i'm gonna have that conversation with my man and be like would you be okay right and like what are you okay with and what are you not okay with how do i communicate with you if something like this does happen yeah you know like just thinking of every scenario that could happen and um and just talking about it and i think and honestly it's it's a dope ass thing to have that conversation with like your significant other because yes it's not just like creating these boundaries but it's it's fun to like to think of these hypothetical situations, you know, because you really learn a lot about each your other. partner and each other and like and even yourself. about yourself. Like yeah. I didn't realize I'd be okay with certain things until like we talked about it, you know, and like it was a safe space to be like, okay, let's put ourselves in the situation. Would I actually be okay with this? You know? Yeah. And so I think just creating a safe space with your partner and just asking all those really like, tough questions and hypothetical situations to see what they would do. And hopefully they don't like judge you for having this conversation. I think, I think a man would appreciate it. 
you know depends on the partner but I yes, think the, yeah not just you would you would hope just, you know depending on their level of mostly men would maturity appreciate yeah they should it should be appreciated right um also how how comfortable with they are with their sexuality a lot of guys if you if you're more like conservative or more traditional you know the idea seems blasphemous or the idea feels like a disrespect and it's just like no yeah i didn't do anything i just wanted to see what that conversation looks like you know but some people are just like so like super monogamous like and then and then it starts a a a, a confrontation because they're like well why'd you even bring this up and it's just like okay well that's your insecurity this is just an idea Um, but yeah, just approach it. Just be like, not that I am ha- want this to happen, but just hypothetically, yeah. like, you know. But you, this story, you guys are already on a good level. Right. Because so they already, they like, already agree they want a threesome. Yeah. We were just speaking generally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, like, they already agree they want a threesome. So now yeah. they just got to talk mm-hmm. about, okay, well, what's Send like. Send me a pic. I want to see. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> You're like looking for a male. Maybe I'll be down. Yeah, it's like, it's like, you want to strap it on? Because if she straps it on, she can hit me from oh, the back. Two girls, don't girls, make no noise. Guy, girl. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like she could strap it on, hit me from the back. Don't make a fucking peep, and then I'll just work on you, man, in the front. Hey, <laughs> tone. It's not gonna happen. But I'm just saying. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll fuck your ex. I think that's the only way. That's the closest I would ever ha- have, like, have sex with a with a woman in the room. Yeah. Is if she played the role of a man and I just wasn't aware. You're right. <laughs> she changed it. Is that rape? <laughs> it's like a little like manipulative. Ideological the- ideological rape. No, I'm just kidding. No. I shouldn't say the R word. Sorry. Don't say it. it's triggering. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyways. I can tell you're tired. The shrooms didn't hit, so this was not a successful I feel like trip. Yeah. I mean it didn't hit like a I'm just Ugh, chill. Like, I'm know. feeling, like, just relaxed. I didn't get, like, the, mm, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, I feel relaxed. I, I feel like, I, I feel kind of a little out of body, like I'm in a movie. I kind of, but I didn't mind. I feel like, I feel like it was definitely still a good, good episode. I, still I like, hope so. We still, get, we still gave a good, good performance. Yeah. Um, we had good I always topics. love the episodes with you because we talk about, like, the deep stuff and then we get funny. Yeah. <laughs> We we go deep and then we go shallow. Yeah, <laughs> we go Literally. high and then we go low. And then we go real low. Um. <laughs> We're like calling the listeners losers and shit. That's we such what? a fucking cunt. I mean, she I said like, she was I a like, new I listener, like, so that's just your introduction to me. I know, but um, but I also I like when you're a little cunty. Yeah, <laughs> it's my brand. <laughs> it's your brand, uh. but you're like a nice cunt. You know, am I? Am I? Yeah, I need to be it's like then. a tasteful, nice. I need to be cunt. just like straight up cunt. Yeah, like you, you mean well when you're cunty. You know, what I mean the cunt mm-hmm. comes from like a good heart. <laughs> <laughs> cunt with a heart. Yeah, that's my new uh, that's IG bio. You. That's my Instagram bio now. Cunt with a heart. I just want to like binge eat hot Cheetos. Okay, so toward the last like twenty minutes, I was already thinking about what I was gonna get for dinner. I'm going to Raising Cane's because <gasps> they opened one in Burbank. Uh, I didn't realize they, they uh, did. Uh, yeah. Because I remember when I was moving I away, go? I was waiting for <laughs> it to. Oh, yeah, let's go. I was waiting for it to open. Oh, my God. Is it a long line, though? I mean, usually. Wait, have you been to Cane's? Yeah. But I mean. But like the one in well, Oakland actually, always we have all- more here. Yeah, the, you know, yeah, versus yeah, like yeah. the Oakland was the only one. Literally, the, only the one. fact that there's more in this area, and also that one's literally across from a Chick Fil A, <laughs> so you can, <laughs> you, I'm I'm thinking just because of the competition, it shouldn't be as congested. Maybe, but overall, Canes is a spot. So I fucking, Wait, okay, we're it? gonna go raising Canes, not sponsored. I'm out. We can drive separately, so we I don't have we'll to commit to like you take me back. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, so I probably want to go with Brian. Mm. Um. Actually, I need to go to Target before this before they close at twelve. So, we're getting canes at different times. Just know that we're gonna enjoy we're canes, canes tonight at some point. Yeah. Okay. Well, plug yourself, bitch. Oh. I'm excited for raising canes now. Yeah, me too. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> it's me, survivor of trauma, gonorrhea, chlamydia, singer, songwriter, <laughs> activist, free Palestine. Um, what's my name? <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Kiko Chu. Oh, formerly known as HK Brains. Yes. Still cunty, just a different name. Yeah. Different name, same cunt. Yeah. 
There we go. Currently known as fucking cunt. <laughs> <laughs> Except you would stay away from a cunt. <laughs> I think I'm going to miss this raspiness. I kind of grew grew. I know. It's sexy. You're I'm a pick like, me bitch now. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> I'm a fuck me bitch. Is that the name uh, of the episode? I'm a fuck me bitch. Yeah. No, that Ironically, because I haven't fucked in months. <gasps> We didn't even talk about that. But it's been that. nice. I've just been working. Okay, good for you. Just I've, focusing I've, on you. I've been emotionally fucked. Did you like fuck after you, your chlamydia healed up? No, that's the thing. I haven't fucked since. Oh. Since it clear out, cleared. Uh, oh, wow. So like clean you're really and clear clean. and under control. Ah! Yeah. Chlamydia. Maybe I'm ready for a relationship. <gasps> Dun, dun, dun. I'm going to leave y'all with a cliffhanger. But that usually happens. It's like you graduate college and then you kind of get your shit together. You get a job and you get a relationship. Look at Jessica Clark. I mean, so. That's why she hasn't been on the fucking show because she's in a goddamn relationship. Yes. Oh, I know. Aren't you being one of those girls that just forgets your friend group when you. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I love you, girl. I love Jess. Um, yes. And I'm also happy for her. I'm happy to hear that. I know. She's happy. But Wait, I'm is also it, was like, it with that boy that, that on the episode? Yeah. He's fucking funny. Wait, no, no, no. Not him. Not Never mind. Oh. <laughs> Shade. I wish it was Isaac. Okay, you got to show me. Noah. You got to show me. Okay, I mean, I don't know. I don't have a picture of oh, her. Oh, mystery man. Yeah, she hasn't even, like... She's in hiding. We're going to force it out of you. I know. We'll just FaceTime her. She's probably in bed with him. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, midnight. She's like, girl, what you want? <laughs> um, I mean, according... Never mind. I'm going to it. I just, um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you after we... I know. I was going to tell you maybe that's another another time. Just say it now. Oh. Because now they're going to I started be- talking to this boy from London. <gasps> from London? I know. I was like, oh my god, an accent. And he's Pinoy? Uh yeah. Wow. And how uh, did you get a hinge? Oh sponsor. (laughs) Let me tell you. I was really kind of just So you've been talking like it's been like it's been like Oh sorry. Well no, not not like seriously talking. Chatting. We're chatting. We're chatting. But it's going good. It's like, you know it's like and you haven't fucked. He was here on holiday. And <laughs> a day. he he wants to meet up, but speaking of age gap, it's twenty four, so okay. I'm eleven years his senior. <gasps> Shit, yeah, mm. being thirty five, you're way older. Which okay, in my mind, when you get older, eleven years is like whatever. But in the, what twenties to thirties, it's it's significant because debatable life, because I was twenty four dating a thirty four year old, and that was very the amount of life that happens from twenties to thirties is significant. So that's yeah. why. But I mean, he knows my age. He knew my age when he, he's the one that sent me a like. So I'm like, you know what you're signing up for. Right. You he, want it. You grown ass man. You want it. Yeah. 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 Aww. But I'm more so like, I'm taking it super easy. It's just like the, the mutual surface level attraction is there. Yeah. And we're just getting to know each other. And he's nice. I'm, I think that was another thing. I'm giving nice guys more of a chance. That's what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Because, because they always get skipped over. No, for sure. And I used to be the dumbass who was just like, no, I want the abusive. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, because they're fun like, until oh, no. they're I, it's unproductive. It is literally an enhancing enhancement to your quality of life if you choose nice guys. Oh, 1,000%. Yeah. I will bet money on that. that <laughs> it's honestly the most common sense. Right. It doesn't have to be like. It's really not. It doesn't have to scientific. be a bet. Of course, a nice guy's going to treat you nice. Duh. It's gonna, and it's also going to better your I entire life. I need to hear life. that. I need to hear that. Hello, attention. Yeah. <laughs> I'm the dumbass. It's, it's unlearning. I'm unlearning. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Anyways, follow me, Stephanie. Make it. <laughs> it was a long plug, okay? It was a long plug. It's been a long time. <laughs> um, follow me, Stephanie Megan, or go to Brocal Therapy. Dot com. Yeah. Oh, you got to play the outro. All that shit is there. Oh, yeah. Everybody in the club, club gets tipsy. tipsy. Everybody in the club gets tipsy. Everybody in the club gets tipsy. Oh, no, wait, 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 what, was the out, what was the intro? Oh. Um, teen drinking is very bad. bad. I got a big, big ID, ID though. though. <laughs> That's the name of this episode. Teen drinking is very bad. Okay. Okay. Love you guys. Bye. Don't you. drink if you're not of age. And please, and if you are drinking, be careful. Yeah, do that shit. Love you. Bye. Love you, bye. Grow, 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 therapy. Grow, 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 grow.